Grandma's kitchen. There's a fiddle tune and a wooden spoon while she's stirring and a singing. There's friends leaving our family land and then the phone's usually ringing. No matter who you are or what you've done, everything's forgiven. Thank God. Thank God. Grandma's kitchen. And ain't it good to be in Grandma's kitchen? Grandma's kitchen. Hello everybody, it's Mary Janet here from Tunes and Wooden Spoons and welcome back and so glad you returned and wherever you are, I hope you're having as beautiful a day as we're having today in Fort Hood. And uh, this uh, past week and including this weekend uh, would have been our annual festival here in Fort Hood called Chestico Days. And unfortunately, it had to be canceled this year, but still a lot of people who had made bookings for a year ahead, people still came uh, who are from our area and all our family, not all of our family, but a lot of our family came home and uh, four of them, and they are out on the ocean today for the annual unofficial boat parade this year which uh, the, all the boat the fishing boats and pleasure boats gather around the Port Hood Wharf and uh, they go for a spin around and they go over to Port Hood Island and they swim over there and it's an absolutely perfect day for that and people have barbecues on their boats and just uh, it's, it's a wonderful thing and tonight they would usually have a finish off just to go days a week with with uh, fireworks at dusk and there's a, a local lady Teresa Sutherland who every year after the the fireworks are uh, are done the community fireworks for the festival are done uh, she has a bunch just from her own yard and so this year since they weren't having the community ones um, people have been supporting her and she is going to do the fireworks tonight. And I just found that out today and I'm so excited because it's so nice for the children, especially to, to end a beautiful week with that. Okay, I hear that you're having trouble hearing me. So I will see if I can uh, look after that. Let me see. Oh, gosh. Okay. My daughter is keeping me informed here. Am I any louder? Is that better for you or not? I'm not sure. So I'll wait for the comments from Tammy. And, uh, She's just keeping me, keeping me informed. She'll, she'll let me know. She'll let me know. No, nope, we're good. We're, uh, I'm actually using a new webcam this week and it has a, a microphone inside it. And I think that that could be, uh, the problem. So we're just after going to go with this and I'll speak as loud as I can so that you can hear me. And, uh, so anyway, I'm going to keep on going and pray that you can hear me as well as you can. And today we're just going to make a standard uh, item in this house, or Scottish oat cakes, cake bread and oat cakes, whatever you want to call it. Now, I've been married almost 50 years, and my mother-in-law, uh, she introduced me to this recipe uh, for cake bread and oat cakes, and I love them. They're a crisp, uh, thin 
uh, oat cake with a, a, perhaps a sweeter taste than the traditional oat cakes that maybe some are familiar with. Because sometimes the, the, uh, the oat cakes I've tasted are, don't have um, any sugar in it or very, very little. Uh, but my preference is this particular recipe. So we're going to go with this one. So people are not hearing me very well. I'm so sorry. We're going to have to keep on trucking with this. I, I um, Let me try one thing here and, and uh, just I'll step back for a second. I'll be right back. No, that's not going to work. And everybody that usually helps me is out on the boat. So I'm just going to really speak loudly and pray that you can hear me. So the very first thing is set your oven to 425, a hot oven. And I'm just going to wash my hands and we'll start. Okay, Tammy, please let me know if you can hear me at all. That would be great. So we're going to start with uh, one cup of butter. The recipe has been posted at 10 to 2. I scheduled that post to go up there. So look on my Facebook page for the recipe or on my website under recipes. They've been posted in two places just a little while ago. So I'm going to use one cup of butter, but you can also use a half a cup of margarine and a half a cup of shortening if you so desire. I find that when you use shortening, they might come out a little crisper, uh, but butter is, is good and, and is traditional. Um, and the other thing about shortening is if you use shortening, when your oat cake is cooling, and you see the, the, the finished product, you might see a few little white streaks in it. Say if you didn't mix up the shortening all that well, you'll see that in the oat cake, which is absolutely fine. And the taste, it doesn't change the taste one little bit. Tastes absolutely delicious with, with shortening and margarine. But I'm going to use butter for traditional reasons. And just one cup of butter here, okay? Now, you're not going to, you're not going to mix up the butter we're going to add all of the ingredients with exception of the water and the soda okay so right now i'm going to add a half a cup of uh, sugar white just plain white sugar granulated sugar and you're going to put in one and a half cups of rolled oats they could be um I don't, this is a half cup measure, so I'm going to put a cup and a half of rolled oats. They can be minute oats, rapid oats, whatever is out there in the market. The only one that I really don't like, I don't like those, the great big flakes of rolled oats that are sold sometimes out there. It's not my preference. So a cup and a half of rolled oats and a cup and a half of flour. So that's one cup measure I'm using, and a half cup. And you're going to need a half teaspoon of salt, I think. Yeah, half teaspoon of salt. I'm just going to guess it here, as I would usually do. 
Okay. No more messages. I guess that's a good thing, I hope. I'm seeing the messages here. Okay, so um, I'm sure you've all turned your oven to 425. It's a hot oven. Now my recipe, I know that my neighbor Cassie, when we were just starting tunes and wooden spoons and whatever, um, uh, I got my, my neighbor next door and she's, oh, I love her. Her name is Cassie McDonald, no relation. She makes delicious oat cakes. So she did a video and her granddaughter recorded it. And it actually, if you look through my videos on my Facebook, um, I hope you're all mixing it just like I am here with my hands. Or you could use a pastry blender if you're not into getting your hands dirty. But anyway, Cassie, Cassie's recipe is almost identical to mine. And she cooks hers at a lower temperature. And it just, it depends on what kind of a finish you want on your oat cakes. I like mine really thin and really crispy. And um, I like them, well, my mother-in-law cooked them at a very high temperature. So I do the same and I like her, I like the way she did it. So that's the way I make it. But anyway, so many people were still asking for the oat cakes. So you end up with a dough like this. Can everybody see this? See, it looks like you're, you could really um, roll it out now, and uh, but you're not going to. You have to add soda because the soda will give it a little bit of leavening, but not much. And the water just kind of, I think it gives it that extra crispiness that you need in it. And you'll have a very quite wet dough, but we'll be adding flour to that as we're rolling it out. Okay, so Tammy is saying that the, the sound is low, but there's nothing I can do about it to just carry on. So I'm going to carry on, but we'll have it definitely fixed by next week. It's just the change in this new webcam. I had a borrowed webcam. Okay, good point. Okay, sorry people. Let me just make a little adjustment here. So this is the dough. And I'm going to push the camera down. Michelle O'Coin, thank you, Michelle. Gonna have dough all over my <laughs> the camera, <laughs> and this is what you do when you have to be everything. Lord have mercy. But we're gonna have some live music in a little while, so that'll be good. That's not good. I just thought you wanted to look at me. Okay, is that better? Is that better? Sorry, people. It's just, you think I'd have this technical thing under control by now. I just want to bake. But anyway, all right, we're ready for the last part. So the last part is um, a half a teaspoon of soda dissolved in two tablespoons of hot tap water. Okay, so I'm going to do that now.
Okay, people, so I have two tablespoons of hot water and a half a teaspoon of baking soda. Just dissolve that. Keep stirring it. And sprinkle it over your dough. Make sure you get every bit of it in. And using a fork, you just mix it up. All right, so now just bring all that dough together and that's all it is to it for mixing it up, okay? And I have on here, it's a pastry mat that I bought at Bed Bath & Beyond and uh, great to have on the table when you're, when I can't do it on the counter. So you'll see that your the, the, the dough is quite wet, but you're going to be using a lot of flour to get that going. So basically what I try to do, I put my dough out and I kind of square it up into a rectangle for starting. Now I'm going to add my flour and you use quite a bit of, of flour. You put it on top of your dough and underneath your dough. It's going to be nice and wet. Don't worry about that. Just make a nice surface there. And your rolling pin. Okay. And just kind of roll it out. Keep your rolling pin nice and floured. And you're going to see, try and keep it in that rectangle because you're going to be slicing this with a knife. And if any piece, just like that, if you saw that, a little piece will come off if you don't have your rolling pin floured good. Just add some more flour. All right. So you're going to roll it out to about one eighth of an inch. And I'm just guessing at that, but. Whatever you roll it out to is the is the going to be the the finished uh, uh, depth of of each oat cake. So if you don't like thick oat cakes, you want to make sure you get it nice and thin. And it doesn't matter how much you work this dough. It can only get better. So don't worry that you're going to overwork it. Like like pastry, you don't want to overwork it at all. But oat cake dough, the more you use it and roll it, the tenderer it will be. I think that's about right. Can you see that? Just a minute. I'm going to wash my hands. I'm going to show this a close-up of this to you. Turn my kettle on. So you can see that it's not very thick at all. All right. Goodness gracious. 
One of these years, I'm going to have a cameraman. There. That's better. So, so now we're going to do the, the cutting up of the oat cake. I've got a lot here on the side. What I usually do is I go, I, I go under it with just a regular butter knife and I remove, slide it under your, your rolled out dough and get rid of that extra flour that you had and just push it off to the side. Okay, and now I'm just going to straighten up the edges. Okay. Now I have two cookie sheets already with parchment paper on it. You should be able to, to make a pan and a half with this. I don't even know how many, maybe 20 or so. We're just going to cut it with the butter knife. I'm going to just make a judgment call here. It's probably about almost three inches wide. And just make long cuts down. Okay. And then cut them across. Okay. And if you have little pieces, don't worry about them. We're going to gather all those little pieces at the end and put it into one oat cake. So I'm just going to cut that first row off, put it aside, and try to get some squared up here. And I'm going to cut that other end off. We'll catch them on the second pan. Little corners like this, I'm going to put there too. And just going to square this one off a little bit. My cousin Danelda would be saying, make them square. They taste good good no matter what shape they are. They're perfectly imperfect. All right, so I'm gonna take my pan over here and they can be placed pretty close together on the pan. There's only a half a teaspoon of soda so they're not gonna spread out. So you can put three across on your cookie sheet, whatever you're using. They are so good. 
Some people like it with a, a swipe of butter on it while they're still warm. Some people like it with cheese, piece of cheese. And I like it just with a cup of tea. Okay. And it's true, truth be known, if I'm making making them, I I just cut them into the best squares I can and the little corners and they're fine like that. So can you see that? I'm gonna put it up closer so you can see everyone. All right. So we're gonna put that in the 425 degree oven for anywhere from six to eight minutes. Eight minutes is probably good for my oven, but I, I always check it because I like them a little brown around the edges. I don't, I don't like them just blonde the, uh, all over. I, I like to get the, them a little extra brownness out along the edges. So I'm going to put them in and I'll be back and we'll pan the second thing. The second thing. Okay. Now I'm going to put a little flour this thing is getting a little doughy, so I put a little flour on that to help get the rest of it up. It's a really good idea. Having a, a good thin, thin, uh, I call it an egg turner or cookie flipper, whatever you call it. And it, uh, the thinner, the better to, to get them off uh, after you roll them out or when you're taking them off the pan. It just... It makes such a difference to have a good one. Now, I'm going to take this little bit that's left. And we're going to roll this out, and we're going to make sure that they're cooked as square as possible. It doesn't matter how much you handle it. Don't worry about that. It's not going to hurt it at all. There's a, a place in Bedeck called the Telegraph House. Okay, people, this is what I'm going to do. I am going to put this on the pan. And I'm going to go live from my phone. I'm going to restart on my phone um, when I have tea with you. And uh, our musician is here because I understand the volume is not that great. And these are definitely not going to be square. They're going to be pieces. Sorry, Nelda. These are going to be like that. Some people make these for Christmas, and then they dip, dip one end of it in melted chocolate. All right. So... I will be back in two or three minutes. I'm going to restart the live feed. I'm going to use my phone 
and I'll be able to show you the finished product, and then I'll introduce you to our musical guest. Okay? So, um, sorry, folks. We'll get there. So, uh, thank you for joining in this experience with me. I swear, uh, I, I don't know why you bother staying, but... Um, my my oat cakes are in the oven and they I set the timer for seven minutes for my oven and I, I just the timer went off and I think it needs a couple more minutes. I'm gonna check on them now. And uh, my tea is on in the teapot. And uh, I'm just gonna have a look right now. See, I have the teacups all ready with my nice little napkins and my tea is almost ready to go. So how are you doing? Oh my God, you guys are so faithful. You're all loading back up. The volume is now perfect. Thank you. Hi, Bev from Alberta. <laughs> Hello, Celeste. Thank you. And I'm sorry about that. I already did an oat cake video and I did it for Multicultural Week over in Richmond County and I think what I'll do is that first part I will replace this video that I did today with that one it's the exact same recipe they were having Multicultural Week and it was uh, I did the Scottish oat cakes Okay, now, I wonder if you can see these. See if I can turn this light on. Can you see those? Can you see the color of those? You know how they're just a, a nice, kind of a medium, crusty brown on, on the outside? I'm going to turn the light on and I'm going to show it to you again. Oh my God, the smell. I, I Isn't it nice to um, just something that brings you back, a smell or, 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 or something like that. It always brings you back. This brings me back to my mother-in-law's kitchen every time I smell them because she loved, loved her oat cakes. She always had them. And how she stored them, she had, a, um, if it was, an, it was an old loaf pan with foil over it, or she used a tin can. And that's the best thing for keeping them. Um, you know when you get those uh, quality street uh, candies at, at, at Christmas, and those tin cans with the nice cover? Just put a little bit of wax paper or parchment paper paper in the bottom of the pan uh, and put them, they have to be nice and cold by the time you put them in, in the storage uh, pan and keep them in that. And they'll keep, if they last that long, they'll keep for a long time. She used to keep them in the warming um, oven and uh, of her stove, the old fashioned stoves, right? And, uh, they were so delicious, and she always had a good hot cup of tea with them. But no, they smell really, really good. And I'm going to put one on a plate for my musical guest and I. And we're going to have a cup of tea whenever he is ready. Ah, uh, don't change your video. It was real. Thank you, Hazel. You guys are so supportive of me. I said, someday I'll, I can be able to do them really, really good. But... um. Anyway, so I am going to take you into my living room while I get my tea ready. And I'm going to see, for God's sakes, if I can set this up <laughs> so that you can see this beautiful man here. Hello, everybody. This is Mac Morin. Mac is just an amazing musician, and he's a... I would call him a dear friend, and uh, he, uh, his mom and I worked together for the school board for many years, and uh, she, 
She was so proud of all of her children, but she was so proud of the fact that Mac was taking up piano way back when. <laughs> do you remember those days? I do remember those she days. She just was so proud of you. Her name was Mary Morin. And um, Mac wanted to be a recording artist, and he has his own CD. I've downloaded it from iTunes. I have her. Beautiful CD. Time for more. Oh, it's a long time. That one. Just, that was it. Yep. <laughs> time for another That's one. But he's he's a very accomplished uh, accompanist as well as being a solo artist and a t piano teacher. Contact me if you need piano lessons in the fall because I'm going to be posting his information. <laughs> but he's been doing a lot of teaching online. If there's any uh, aspiring piano players out there that want to learn our style. But he tours regularly with Natalie McMaster. He's one of her bandmates and uh, so many other artists that he plays with. And he so graciously uh, agreed to come today and uh, give a couple of uh, sessions here. And in between the next couple of tunes that he's going to play, we're, him and I are going to have a cup of tea and we'll have a little chat. That's what I'm looking forward to. <laughs> can you smell them? <laughs> I can. Okay. My mouth is here. <laughs> so, Mac, I'm going to try to set this up sure. on the table so that I'm not wiggling around. No, I'm good. Since we had a little change. It just seems nice and live that way. Okay. See, Mac? I can see it. Can you all see Mac? So. And somebody is, please tell him that Colin something McDonald from Craigner sends greetings. Oh, nice. So I can't greetings see back. the second, second uh, <laughs> a little message there, but uh, I'm gonna get the tea ready and I'm gonna let you listen to this wonderful man. I'm gonna try to catch him yeah, out of the good. window a little bit. Yeah, what's and, my good side? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And I'll this close way. the curtains. <laughs> there, I'll just play a couple of a merch, a couple of strass bays, and a couple of reels. Hopefully by then the tea will be ready and we'll be snacking away on Mary Janet's oat cakes. <laughs>
Okay. That was amazing. Thank you, everybody. Yeah, that was fun. I've never played tunes to the smell of oat cakes before. <laughs> <laughs> so I am going to give him some oat cakes. And it's very distracting to have that nice smell. <laughs> <laughs> and that nice Cape Breton cup that I have. I'm going to put it on the coffee table and I'm going to talk to Mac for a minute. Or here, I'll try sure, it right here. Sure, Is it allowed to sit here? Yes. Excellent. Oh my gosh. Do I have to try these right on air and everything? Well, you can. Oh my gosh. I'm that can... taste tester, right? They yes. always saw on the morning TV shows when they're making something and then all of a sudden they flatten. <laughs> <laughs> and good or bad, they got to say it's good, but That's I bet it. you this is going to be perfect. Let me try here. Here we go. Mmm. <laughs> Just like grandma's. Did your grandmother make them? Mm. Did, yeah. Yeah. We always look forward to going to grandma's because she always had home-baked goodies. It didn't matter what time of year, what time of day you went, there was always something that she had. Biscuits or pie or oat M cakes. Molasses or cookies. Molasses cookies, fat archies. Like, oh, the fat archies. Mm. I've had a lot of requests for fat archies. Oh. Was never a particular... Um, a love of mine were Fat Archie's, and um, I'm going to try to put this closer. That's exactly what people need to see, a close-up of me eating. You got it. <laughs> you got it. My bandmates of Biola will be making fun of this, so. Anyway, <laughs> Maddie, Wendy, Matt, you just keep it to yourselves. <laughs> anyway, mm. there. Can you see me over here? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay. So... I, I have to say, and, and um, not only, of course, this wonderful um, piano that uh, he has control of and everything that he does on the piano just brings great joy to people. And Mac is the first one to criticize himself, and I'll tell you that. <laughs> and he'll look for the mistakes that he made where... We, the, the listeners who love him, we're just listening to, wow, can't he do that? It's amazing. But what I wanted to say, not only is he a beautiful piano player, but I love step dancing, taught it for years. This man, uh, as many of you are familiar with Mac, knows that he's performed uh, his step dancing expertise many times over in um, huge stages all over the world. And uh, so I love him for that too. He is what we call the epitome of Cape Breton style step dancing in that he's close to the floor and uses the good percussive heels and toes and some of the old steps are still in there. And um, I just love Mac's dancing. And when he gets up to dance, he just wows the audience. So thank you for that, Mac, and for keeping that up. And his mother was a beautiful dancer as well. And actually, I went for the first time to Scotland in 1983, but his mother, Mary, was, was in a dance group. What were they called? They were, uh, the Scottish country dancers from Hawkesbury. What were the... the what was their uh, name? They uh, weren't Mul or some for Mulgrave uh, or whatever. I can't remember the name of the group this. now. But they actually went over to Scotland and um, they were performing over there. They were Scottish country dancers and she was part of that group. But she actually broke apart from that group over there and uh, showed them Cape Breton style step dancing. And actually, did she do a little teaching or just demonstrating? I think just demonstrating. Demonstrating. So that was long before 1983. It was probably in the 70s, was it? It was, she was 16, so it would have been in 66. 66, in wow. 66, yeah. So, uh, you know, uh, many people credit my arrival in 1983 when I was teaching there as one of the first times but in actual fact Mary had been there all that time before so uh, and she was a lovely dancer as well close to the floor so Mac well, how has COVID uh, yeah. helped or thing, uh, harmed you <laughs> my goodness no I mean for somebody who's I've been on the go a lot for a long time we were just talking a bit before this and saying how this is my first summer home without with a summer to do summer things in 23 years so i'm i you know selfishly 
I know there's a lot of, it's been a giant impact on everybody and across all everything, but I've kind of enjoyed my time here at home this summer. Mm -hmm. Sure, I miss doing a bit of travel, but I certainly am grateful for the time to be home. Home, yeah. and actually starting the instructional, uh, I, I don't know how much of the instructional part that you've done prior to COVID, I know you've done some teaching schools here and there. Yeah. But that, this has really kind of taken off that part, it, was it this spring? Yes, I was really fortunate with uh, online teaching. Everybody seems to be moving things online. Of course, we need to do things in a virtual way now, certainly in the short term, but uh, I had a few people asking me if I would consider teaching. And I've taught, as Mary Janet said, in settings like the Gala College or away at a festival in a workshop or certain things with Yolik or and the, um, this was my first kind of uh, trial uh, go ahead at, at online teaching and it was amazing. I had a, such an excellent time. I had so many great students and hope, hope to see some of them back. You know, you, all levels, beginners and advanced and... How many, how many students in all did you have? In total I had over 70, probably 75. Amazing. Yeah. Monday to Friday, nine to five kind of thing. Uh, it right? was. It was every day, five yeah. days a week. And um, I don't think I got much vitamin D because I was in during the daytime all the time. So, but uh, I, I really enjoyed it. And just having that chance to interact with people, I've never had that yes. opportunity on the, in the online way. And you meet so many people. I, you know, now I can consider those 75 people um, friends in music now as opposed to just people that you might pass or just say a quick yeah. hello to. So, yeah, I really So contact, that. contact me uh, through uh, my message, my inbox on, on my Facebook page. If there's any musicians out there, piano players that want to, to do this as a beginner or are, if you already are and want to learn this style of accompaniment, yes. right? Yes, yeah, yep. Yeah. So uh, anyway, th th so that's one part. But before we, we close off uh, at, the, at the end here, Mac is going to play another set of tunes here. I want to just go back over the, the cooking part. Mm. I am so sorry, I, once again, in another week, that <laughs> this technical stuff just continues to uh to baffle me i had a borrowed webcam for all of this time and belonged to my church and uh, i have to had to give it back and i had ordered a new webcam and the way the program is all set up it um it doesn't give you a chance to really test it because it's all hooked up and to go live, it would be going live outside of my live feed show, so I couldn't really test it. I could only look at the bars on it and pray that it would be okay. But anyway, that wasn't the case, but we'll fix it before next Sunday, I promise. Uh, I think you'll all agree that you can be an amazing <laughs> baker, an amazing dancer, an amazing mom, and an amazing <laughs> Cape Retner. You don't have to be an amazing technician either. That's that's fine. You're allowed to kind of suffer like the rest of us. <laughs> I know, and that's what it is. And they're so accommodating, and they're not critical at all. And thank you all for being that way. But I, I was just going to review the recipe just for those that are watching and can't look back at the recipe while you're watching live. So it's a, one cup of butter, one and a half cups of flour, one and a half cups of rolled oats, a half a cup of white sugar, a uh, half a teaspoon of salt, I think it is. Mix that all up together with your hands is the best way. And then uh, dissolve um, a half a teaspoon of baking soda into two uh, tablespoons of hot water. Mix it up, put it in and and uh, gather the dough together roll it out to about eighth one eighth inch because with only a little bit of baking soda it's not going to raise very much anyway so however thin you like your uh, oat cakes to be would you say an eighth of an inch yeah yeah or probably an eighth of an inch and um and and the the, the thinner the the, the crispier and that's my personal preference and that was my mother-in-law's preference and that's how she liked it so that it snaps apart but I, I wanted to to bring this to your attention and just in case uh, some of you didn't um, I did bring this up at one other show about your baking soda some people are, were saying uh, with some other recipe I can't recall which one it was now but it didn't raise exactly the way they wanted and it's always good to check your baking powder or your baking soda whatever your recipe calls for but baking soda 
one open the box it shouldn't be used after 30 days and that's recommended by the the manufacturer this is arm and hammer that's the usual one i get but at the very top of the box once you open it it says to write in the date that it expires so i write in the date that expires and it's actually expiring on tuesday so it's been open it'll be open a month on tuesday and that's why usually i only buy the small boxes and um, my next box is a small box and it's already up in the cupboard and ready for me to use but never throw it away put that box after um, uh, the month is up in the fridge put it down your sink put it down your toilet put it in a nice pan of water and soak your feet in it there's lots of good uh, uses for baking soda you can find online so don't throw it away but really some people I was talking to locally were saying I use it for, I have it in my cupboard for about a, a year because you don't use a lot of baking soda when you when you're uh, baking but the the manufacturer only guarantees that it's it loses its uh, its power uh, after about a month to to help your food rise so just a little tip for you and the other thing I wanted to say that I didn't say before is once you bake your um, your oat cakes and you take them out at uh, the way that you desire and you put them in the pan and you put them on your cooling rack leave them in the pan or on the pan for a good 15 minutes while they're there they're crisping up using that little extra heat that's left in the cookie sheet perhaps or just sitting there and it and it and it gets um, nice and crisp when it's on the cookie sheet and then remove them and put them on the cooling rack and don't put them into a tin can with the cover until until uh, they're nice and cool at room temperature and which today is 25 degrees <laughs> <laughs> i know i know i know so next sunday um, i'm going to be back again next sunday you're not getting rid of me yet i'm going to be making lemon squares mm. next sunday and it's a five layer square and the square i call them charlene's lemon squares charlene is our son mitchell's mother-in-law and uh She's a great cook, although she wouldn't say that herself. She doesn't like to cook, a, bake a lot of stuff. But um, she, w whatever I've tasted of her stuff have been delicious, this being one of them. So I call them Charlene's Lemon Squares. And they've got like five layers to them. And there's Cool Whip. You'll need Cool Whip for next week. You'll need Lemon Pie Filling. Um, uh, and the rest is just, you know, your regular stuff stuff that you, you regularly need you'll need um flour and all of that sort of stuff uh, there's graham crumbs you'll need for the bottom okay and um they're gonna need a, a a half a package of cream cheese softened at room temperature and that's it you're not even going to need any flour actually the graham uh, graham crumbs and melted butter for the bottom then cream cheese and white sugar and some Cool Whip for the next layer. Then a uh, filling and you're gonna half that and you're gonna mix it in with Cool Whip. And then you're gonna, the last layer is some Cool Whip with a little sprinkling of graham wafers on the top. Honest to God, they are so delicious. Sounds decadent. They are decadent and they're really good if you like lemon. And I, I think that's pretty much it before I give it, give it away to Mac. But I want to go back in the past week to wish a happy birthday belated, although we celebrated here on Friday. Our son, uh, Mitch uh, Brennan, uh, had his 47th birthday here. We had, I don't know how many people here, uh, just family, just family. And... Uh, there, there was a lot, and we had tenderloin steaks barbecued, and I made him the score bar ice cream cake, mm -hmm. and uh, it was a really nice night. So that was fun. And then yesterday, um, our second oldest grandson, Ben Stanley, 
Uh, ben uh, is summering because of COVID out in BC, poor boy, right? <laughs> But he is heading back to university at the University of Windsor in Ontario, uh, and mostly it'll be online. But yesterday he celebrated his 20th birthday, and he'll be entering into his third year of his commerce degree at, at the University of Windsor, and he loves it there. And uh, so I was talking to him, FaceTiming uh, from last night, because we had another party over at Mitchell's house with everybody, you know, we're traveling from house to house during Chess to Go Week. We so miss our son Gordy and our daughter Tammy and daughter Margie, who always try to be home during this week when we're all gathered together. And uh, But the rest of us did a darn good job without you guys. And uh, we're, uh, we're, we're doing our best. So I hope that the oat cakes turned out delicious for all of you. If there's any questions, you know you can inbox and uh, it'll take me up to Wednesday to kind of filter through everything and get back to you if there's any questions that you have. But in the meantime, I'll come back and just say a quick goodbye at the end, but Mac is going to take it away for another set of jigs Couple this of time. Jigs, sure, yeah. 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 So uh, don't you just love this guy? <laughs> so take it away, sure, Mac, and I'll just <laughs> and you have, have enjoy. It. I'll have my strupa good tea. <laughs>
Oh my God, yeah. that was so good. All I could think of was my tea and oat cake. I was salivating the whole time. <laughs> Okay, folks. Well, that's it for another week. So thank you for coming. And once again, putting up with, with my, my uh, technical glitches. See if I can get by the, the, everything here without tripping. But uh, I hope you, uh, your oat cakes are perfect. And uh, just have a wonderful week. And I'll see you next Sunday for those who want to join up again. And uh, we'll make those lemon squares. And um, don't know if we'll have any live entertainment, but we'll see if there's anybody around who wants to drop in. And uh, have, a, have a good one. And I love you and love one another. Bye-bye, everybody. Hi, everybody. Thanks so much for watching. I would love it if you would just hit subscribe up there and that would be wonderful. And if you'd like to order an apron, you can go to tunesandwoodenspoons.com. So the link is down there in the description. So please do that if you'd like to. And happy baking.